Hello, everybody. Lovely day we've got going out there. Hope everyone's feeling well. Let's sing together hymn number 203. His name is wonderful. Join with me as we sing that. you're doing well. Hope that you've had a wonderful week and a wonderful service this morning as we approach this Thursday, as we approach Thanksgiving, right? And we're certainly going to be talking about that today. It's one of my most favorite holidays. And I'll tell you today, no matter what state that we're in, no matter where we find ourselves, we have so much to be thankful for, to be grateful for. We're going to talk about that. And above all things, we thank God for his wonderful blessings of life. Amen. I'm thankful for another day to be in his house to worship him, to feel his Holy Spirit and be blessed by him. I hope that you have been too. Uh, there's a, but we've got a lot of uh, some announcements. I want to go over several things here. So let me get right into it. So we will pray and get back into worshiping the Lord. Uh, but we certainly, and I know that you, most of you know this, but we need to remember the, uh, remembering the Tommy Johnson family. I believe, Jenny, I think the funeral's tomorrow, correct? We need to remember Gail and Logan and the family. So y'all remember this family in your prayers, uh, certainly. Uh, shoe boxes are due today. I saw several of them in the office. I appreciate that. We had fun packing ours. It's always a bunch of fun, I'm going to tell you. And, uh, and I, I don't know if y'all did that, but I'll let you know when we find out our destination of our shoe boxes, because I did mine online, because I'm always interested to see where they go. And that's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, that's just a wonderful ministry. It's great the church is involved with that. And I know the children will be blessed when they get those shoe boxes. Also, I want to tell you this, and this is uh, something new. And that is two weeks from today, on December the 6th, uh, we will be starting back nursery and children's church. Okay? And so it's going to be a scaled version of that. The ladies have got a great plan in place for that. We feel comfortable that we can do that and be safe uh, and with the protocols that we need. Uh, it will not be here. It will be in the fellowship hall. So they, and, and we're also going to have, and this is, I'm very excited about this. We're going to have a virtual option for the children that they'll be able to find online as well. Very excited about this. This is kind of a, uh, where, you know, where we may be going. And that is that we want to make sure that there is opportunities for our children and adults alike to enjoy the service that we have here at Saragossa First Baptist Church, whether or not they can be here in person. we you know, technology has afforded that. And one thing that COVID has taught me as your pastor is that I cannot put God in a box. And nor can we ever put God in a box. He, he can use anything, and that includes a pandemic, to, to broaden our minds and our horizons to think bigger picture that there's those out there that, that simply want to hear the word of the Lord and they want to worship him in spirit and in truth. And whether that may be in virtual uh, location, it could be in their living room, it could be in their car, wherever it may be where they can hear the worship and praise the Lord. We're going to provide that solution for our folks here and those who want to enjoy that. So that's news. That's two weeks from today. We will do that as well. Let me see what else I've got for you. Also outside, you will see on the table the nursing home Christmas shop list. So you know, we, in the barrel is out there today to bring your gifts to the nursing home. Uh, patients there. And I'll tell you, you know, think about this for a second, guys. You know, I know we just got through. I know Christmas is coming up and I know we've got a lot we have to do and you got to buy and presents and so forth and so on. But the nursing home folks this year, it's been a tough year for them. You agree? It's been a tough year for them. So why don't we really focus on the next two weeks? Because you need to have your gifts to the nursing home residents in the barrel 
two weeks from today on December the 6th as well because on the next Saturday, the 12th, is when it will be distributed to them, okay? So two weeks from today. Let's make sure that we focus on that, all right? It doesn't have to be much, but I'm telling you, those, those residents this year have had a year, amen? And, I, you know, we've talked about that. So let's bless them. All right, let's give to them and put a smile on their face and give them something that they would enjoy. And so this list is out there. It gives you an idea of what to purchase and put into the barrel there as well. And then lastly, uh, Sister Paula had gave me this prayer request this morning. Let's remember the Amanda Hanley family. Her daughter was involved in a serious car accident. And we need to remember this family uh, in our prayers for sure. So let's remember them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now and ask his blessings upon us. Amen. We're going to continue to remember Sister Joanne, no doubt about it. Continue to remember her in your prayers as well. Let's go to the Lord right now and ask his blessings upon us. You can't put cash in the shoeboxes? Okay. Yes. Okay, good deal. Yep. Excellent. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. Another day, Lord, to, to wake up and have breath in our lungs, God, and to feel your blessings, God, that you have given us today, God, to be in your house, God, to hear your word, and then, God, just to sing praises unto you, God, because you're so good. Lord, we are so thankful for you. God, for everything that you have done for us, God, for your Son in Christ Jesus, God, that you have made a way, God, for us when there was no way. God, then we were dead and lost in our sins. God, you looked so kindly upon us and compassionately upon us, God. You didn't have to, but you did it because you love us. And God, you provided that way through salvation through your son, Jesus, for what he did on Calvary. So God, we thank you for that today, God, and we praise you. Lord, we're so thankful, God, for every blessing that we see, the countless blessings, God, that we don't see, and we know they're numerous, Father. Forgive us, God, when we don't stop and simply thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace, Lord, that you show us every day of our life, God. And I just pray today, Father, God, that through the preaching of your word, God, and the singing of your word, God, that we would just be have a heart filled with thanksgiving today, God, and gratitude for you and what you do for us, God, every day, and how you've helped us through this year. Very difficult year for many, Father. Very difficult year. But, God, you're st you, you are exactly who you said you would be in the most difficult times, God. You were right where you said you would be during the most difficult times. And, God, we thank you for that, God. <laughs> Lord, I ask your blessings upon us as families, Lord, as we gather together, God, Thursday, Lord, and to celebrate Thanksgiving, Father. God, may we be so thankful for our families, God, that you have given us, Lord. Lord, that we would not take any of them for granted, God, and that we would show them the love, God, and the admiration, God, that we have for them, Father. Lord, and we just thank you for the opportunity to do that. And, Lord, I ask your blessings upon us here. God, there's so many needs, Lord, that we've already mentioned, so many that are mourning, so many that are struggling with sickness, Lord. We know those that are still fighting cancer, God, and, and, and the coronavirus, Lord. There's numerous, Lord, Lord, uh, uh, folks that are suffering with that, God. We call them to your presence. We pray, God, for help. We pray, God, for your healing power to touch them, Father. And we will thank you for what you will do, God. And we just love you today. We pray, God, that you would have your way today, God. May your spirit reign. May we feel your awesome power among your people yet again, Father. And we will simply praise you for what you will do in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just want to take a second to echo what Sean said about uh, our loved ones and friends that are in nursing homes and even people that we don't know. I mean, think about the fact that they're there all the time and they don't get to see their family. And now it's been practically a year. And sure, they have their caretakers that, that come in and those are regular people that they see and hear from and talk to. But they haven't even seen their faces 
in over a year. It's just a masked person always coming into their lives, even if it's a familiar voice, you know? These, so I can't imagine the loneliness that's going on in these people's hearts. So right. this is a chance for us to brighten their day in some small way. So let's really, I, I agree with Sean, let's really have that, have that bucket out there just overflowing in the yeah. next couple of weeks. Let's sing together. This first song is called Come As You Are. bunch of times he already knows all these things you know we feel like we've done so much wrong and we we can't be redeemed but we can be it's all about your heart but uh come as you are he already knows it he is good to us let's sing good good father Never alone. 
and it's been such a bad year, but he's still so good to us. I was telling Nina the other day, uh-oh. Um, you know, I was trying to think of, the year's been so rough on so many folks. What are some things that have been great? And one of the things, this is so weird, sorry. Um, one of the things I never thought I'd get to be or get to experience is the next door Papa. But my kid, one of my one of my children moved home, and so I've got my two grandkids right next door to us now since March. And uh, I've got to have that time where I've got to be next door Papa, where the grandkids can just walk over. Never thought that would ever happen. So that's such a blessing. That's been great. Let's sing another song out of our hymn books. This is going to be. Blessed be the name of him number 206. <laughs>
come on and share a song with us. chapter 17 this morning I'm going to read some scripture that over the years really has puzzled me because I don't you know there's not a clear answer we're going to explore it today but it stems from a question that Jesus asked after he worked the miracle and the question he asked was where are the nine where are they at we're going to talk about that because I've always wondered where did these guys go what happened to them why did they not return to Christ and give thanks? So the best way that I know to maybe try to answer that question is to try to figure out ways that we don't and the reasons why we don't return and thank Christ for what he has done in our life. And maybe we can get an idea of maybe why these nine did not. But it's, it's going to be, I'm going to give you, since there was nine lepers that did not return, I'm going to give you nine reasons why we do not thank God when we should thank him. So if you want to get your pen or a pencil ready, I think God's got something that can help us today as we look at a, an opportunity to make sure daily that we have an attitude of gratitude towards God and His blessings towards His people. Luke chapter 17, let's just read the story starting in verse 11. It says, And it came to pass as He went to Jerusalem that He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as He entered into a certain village, there met Him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. 
And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Have y'all read that in a while? Is that not a shocking example of ungratefulness, of being unthankful in this text that we just read? Ten lepers were healed, but only one came back to give thanks for it. Isn't that sad? And even Jesus had to ask the question. Think about what a sad question this, that, that is being asked by the Savior. Where are, where's the nine at? I healed ten of you. Now think, now think about it for a second. If you, you would think that it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's something as life-changing as being healed of leprosy and understanding what leprosy was back in that day and how it ruined people and how you had to stay away from people and how you looked and how you smelled and what was happening to your skin and all the nastiness of leprosy. And how you had to go around and say, unclean, unclean. And you couldn't, did y'all catch the scripture and said they stood afar off? If you had leprosy, you always had to stand afar off. You couldn't get near anybody. You couldn't have relationships. Couldn't have friendships, really. You couldn't go about and act as on, like a, a normal person would in a normal day. Your days were never normal if you had leprosy. And these ten men were healed instantaneously because they obeyed the words of Christ. But only one came back to give thanks. You would think something of that magnitude would well up inside of somebody an attitude of gratitude where they couldn't stand it but come back and thank the Lord for what they did, what He has done in their life. Amen? Changed their life forever. Only one came back. Only one exercised what the writer of Hebrews says is considered a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. You ever wondered? I've wondered this. Get into your own little spiritual world and your own mind as you read and you study. You ever wondered why they didn't come back? Has that ever crossed you? It's crossed my mind many times. Why did they not return? They saw the other one go back, right? One turned around and said, I got to go back. What did the other nine say? Why did they not return? Well, I don't know. Okay, I don't have a clear answer for you. No one does. But what I want to do is explore that to this morning. And let's, and let's look at reasons why we don't give thanks many times. And let's see if maybe that could be some excuses or some reasons why these nine did not return. So first off, let's look at that first leper who didn't return. Maybe he did not go back because it just wasn't convenient for him to go back. Now I want you to think about gratitude for a second. Is it ever really convenient to give gratitude? I don't know, because the writer of Hebrews, again, calls it a sacrifice. And by definition, a sacrifice is supposed to cost you something, right? A sacrifice is supposed to be inconvenient if it costs you something. So to give thanks to God or maybe to give thanks to anybody may be inconvenient to you, but it's something that we should do. We have to, first off, make the effort. We have to be purposeful, conscious of it, willingly focused upon it to understand that this is a moment that I need to stop what I'm doing. As busy as I am, no matter what may be happening, this, this person, this one could have been so excited. He's got to go tell somebody. That's, I understand that, but first, maybe we should give thanks for what just happened in our life, and then we can tell it. But, but Sean, that's, but I have walked this far to see the priest. You understand that's going to be inconvenient for me to turn around and go all the way back to find Christ. But yes, but he's worth it. And, but yes, but you need that in your life. You need to be able to give that thanksgiving back to God for what He's done. Regard Sometimes inconvenience comes in, you know, we're so focused upon our time because we have so little of it. I understand that. I'm right there with you. If we had a 36-hour day, I think I'd get everything done. But we don't. And many times it's inconvenient for us to stop what we're doing. What may seem to be important at that moment and turn to God and give Him thanks for what He has done for us in that moment. Are you with me? Amen. At that day, at that hour, at that minute that God has blessed us to stop and turn to Him and tell Him, thank you. As well as tell us others, thank you for what they have done. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. 
So maybe he didn't go because it just wasn't convenient for him. Church, we have to make it convenient. We have got to stop and take the time and make the effort to thank God. Now, y'all listen to me. I'm not standing up here as some hypocrite because I fail many times like you do, okay? But we have got to stop daily in our lives and to thank God for the blessings of that day. Of that day. Because I can tell you, you can find them if we look for them. Regardless of what's going on that day, we've got to stop and turn to God and say, thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for helping me. In my prayers at night, one of the first things I say, because I just want him to know it, I say it every time. And I just want, Lord, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this day of life. Thank you, God, for this day of freedom. God, that you gave me to live my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. To do that every day. Well, Sean, I'm just so busy. Now, now listen, let me hit you with something. We too busy to tell God, thank you. I mean, so when we start talking like that, it kind of makes us feel this small, right? I'm not trying to make anybody hurt anybody's feelings. I'm talking to myself. We, we have got the time. <laughs> We've got the time to turn to God and say, thank you for this day. God, I woke up with breath in my lungs. My heart was beating. Lord, I, I woke up blessed beyond measure. I'm gonna get, I, I'm, I was about to go down another road, cause, but that's coming. Hold on a second. Let me just go on. I'm about to talk about that in a minute. We have to make it, regardless of how inconvenient it may be or what we're doing for that day, we have to sacrifice ourselves and sacrifice uh, a praise of thanksgiving to God for His goodness. Secondly, I wonder if that second leper was just too proud. I wonder if he had too much pride, too proud, to go back and to tell Christ thank you. You know, I believe it takes a measure of humility to express thankfulness. I think it does. You agree? Anybody agree? I think it takes a measure of humility to tell somebody and to express appreciation and to express gratitude and thankfulness to someone. I think it does. I think it takes humility to say thank you because I think it shows that shows God. Number one, if we tell God thank you, it tells him that we need him. God, thank you for helping me do something that I could not do on my own. Or maybe I'm telling you thank you. Because it's something that you've helped me accomplish. Because how you've encouraged me. It, you know, or maybe, uh, you know, so it, therefore it, I have to humble myself and not think of myself as somebody where I don't have to take time to tell God thank you or to tell someone else who has blessed my life thank you and to show them gratitude. Many scriptures throughout the Bible stress how God puts a great priority on humbleness, on humility. Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. James says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble, right? We should never be so proud that we cannot show gratefulness and be thankful. You know the best way to fix that and to not be so proud? Now listen, can we just, because we're family in this room, right? Is that a, We are, right? So I can just talk to you as family. Okay, we need to remember where we came from. We need to remember where we came from. And when we remember where we came from, I think it's easy to show gratitude. Amen? And young people, I want y'all to listen to me. Got the teens up here and others in the back and children. Y'all listen to me. You're not raised in a vacuum. And what I mean by that is you are not going to get to where you're going by yourself. It's going to take a lot of work by people who love you to get you to where you're going. It's God's grace and His blessings. Absolutely, He formed you and made you in your mother's womb in His image, and He loves you. But then what He did, He birthed you into a family who loves you and sacrifices for you every day of your life. And we can't be so proud, we can't stop by and tell Mama, thank you for what you have done for me today. Thank you, Grandmother. Thank you, Paul. Paul. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Brother, Sister. Thank you for what you've done for me. I appreciate that. I could not have got that done today without your help. We can't be so proud. We have to remember where we came from. I'm looking out this room and I see people. And, they're, and most of them are out there on that pew with my mother. And my parents. And my mother and father-in-law. And my wonderful blonde-headed wife. Who loves me. My children. I know I, am, I would never be the man that I am today. Never would I be who I am today without those people on that pew. Never. And I'm thankful for them. Amen. I'm thankful for them. 
We can't ever be so proud because we're somebody, because this world wants to lift you up and tell you who you are. We gain our identity from God Almighty. Not from this world and what it tells us that I am. I am who I am because of Christ Jesus. And I can never be so proud to stop and tell him, thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you, God, for blessing me with such a wonderful family. Thank you, God, for loving me so much. We can never be so proud. You see, this world, this world don't care too much for humility. This world don't care too much for that. It's something that we have to, it's something that God gives us the opportunity to do. The world tells us something uh, that's opposite of that. We need to make sure that we have no problem and daily that we humble ourselves before God and thank him for who he is and what he does in our life. Moving on. I wonder if that third one, I wonder if he was just too self-conscious to turn back and give God glory. Maybe he thought, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. I wouldn't know really how to express myself. So I just won't do it. That's the wrong attitude, y'all. We need to learn the language of thanksgiving. And if you don't know what that is, I'm about to help you. You need to listen. You know, it is, and that language needs to be in such part of our life. It's just kind of our ordinary vocabulary of what we do in our prayers and with our relationships with others. I'm going to tell you, if, if you don't know what to say, and if you say this right here to another human being, you're going to make their day. Look them square in the eyeballs and tell them, I appreciate you. I beg you to do that this week. To a co-worker, to a friend, to a family member, when you're leaving them and, they're, and you're leaving their presence and you're saying your goodbyes and you're giving your COVID air hugs and your knuckle bumps, say... I appreciate you so much. You will make their week. All of a sudden, you have put them up on a cloud and they're going to float away. <laughs> float away. Because you show gratitude for their life and what they mean to you. Amen? I dare you. I double dog dare you <laughs> to try it. Tell somebody you're thankful for them this week. Tell them. You, we can't be so self-conscious. Well, I just don't know what to say. All you got to say is, I appreciate you. I do that at work all the time. I do it all the time. I consciously, purposely tell somebody, thank you for helping me. And I'm going to tell you, it goes a long way, y'all. It goes a long way to tell somebody that we appreciate their efforts and what they mean to us in our life. We have to have time and, and have ample time included in every prayer for Thanksgiving. You say, Brother Sean, I just sometimes just really don't know what to say. I'm going to help you with that. It's very easy. We can start off just by thanking God for his blessings. Just for his blessings. Just say, God, I thank you for your blessings. I know it. I don't know. I can't list them to you, God, but I know that they're there. And I know they're numerous. And I know there's some I see. There's many I don't see, God, but I thank you for them. God, I thank you for my family. God, I know they love me unconditionally. I know they love me outside of you, God. I know they love me more than anybody on planet Earth. And that's the truth, y'all. Amen. Yeah, with me? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm telling you. God's helping us today. Lord, I thank you for my family. God, I thank you, Lord, for my health. Think about this year Kurt was talking about earlier. Think about this year and what we have witnessed and seen. God, I thank you for my health. Thank you, God, for blessing me. And then, then, we, can, we, then we go straight into a prayer of blessings upon Joe and others. Those that have, that have passed away and those families that are mourning, God bless them, Lord. God, but I thank you today, Lord, I was healthy. See how easy that is? We don't got to get into some long, drawn-out theological debate with God. Just thank you. God, I thank you, Lord, for my job. Lord, you made a way today that I could pay my bills. God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you, Lord, that there's food on my table. God, I thank you, Lord, there's a roof over my head. And listen, here comes something hard. God, I thank you for the trial I face today. Because I know you said you got it in your word, and I believe it to be true that, God, you said you was going to work it out for my good. So, God, I thank you for it. Woo! -hoo! You let your faith begin to grow with that kind of a prayer. Don't know what to say? Sure we do. We can just talk to God. Listen to what, what I read from Matthew Henry. Y'all know Matthew Henry. He's a 17th century scholar, and he's famous for the Bible commentary. And i got to set in my office in there, the Matthew Henry robe. But anyway, he was once robbed by some thieves and and they robbed all his money from him. And when he got back, and I, guess, I guess this is what men did in the 17th century. He wrote in his diary, 
I guess I just put it notes on my phone today, but he wrote in his diary, okay? And this is what the quote he wrote in his diary. He said for that day, he said, let me be thankful first because I was never robbed before. I've never been robbed before, so I'm thankful for that. Second, because although they took my money, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it wasn't very much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. Even in a trial, Matthew Henry knew how to be thankful. He knew how to be grateful. He had a bad day, but Matthew Henry knew that somebody else had a worse day than him. Amen? We got to make sure that we get to that mentality in our life, church. And I'm not making light of people's problems. And I'm making a joke of people's circumstances. I know that they're serious. But I'm going to tell you, no matter what we face, there's somebody else who got a worse call than you did that day. There's always something going on in this world. And there's always something we can look outside of what's going on in our own little world and be grateful for it. We just can't be so self-conscious that we just can't talk to God. God is, listen, God, yes, God is awesome and almighty and creator and king and Lord and judge. And he's just and holy and righteous. Yes, he is. He's also your heavenly father. Who desires for you to talk to him like you talk to your father. Amen? Mm -hmm. Moving on. I wonder if the fourth man, I'm doing pretty good. Listen, I wonder if the fourth man said, you know, there's no use in telling him he knows I'm thankful. There's no, there's no use in telling him he knows it anyway. So why should I go back? He knows it. Well, yeah, that's true. There's some truth to that. No doubt that God does know whether or not we're grateful because he's God. He knows everything, right? So yes, he knows whether or not that we're grateful or not, but he desires for us to express it to him and express it verbally to him. And this is what I mean by that. You don't believe me? Y'all don't believe me? Let me ask you a question. Don't you, don't, you want to get your feathers in the ruffle and see that streak on your back start to appear. Do something for somebody that you sacrifice for and them not thank you for it. <laughs> oh, it's quiet in here. Oh, it's quiet. You don't even have to even tell me how you're going to respond to that. Now, let me, because this has happened to all of us, right? You sacrifice your time and effort and resources to help somebody that they really needed and you help somebody and have them walk away and not thank you for it. You'll be just fine with it, right? All of you. Nobody have any problem with it whatsoever. You say, oh, bless their heart. You'd move on, right? Every one of you, right? No, not at all. Amen. You'd be fiery mad. Because here's what it's going to say. <laughs> Here it comes. You know, I don't mind helping somebody, but they could just be grateful for it. <laughs> and we've all said it, right? Do you think our Heavenly Father is any different? He's no different. He desires to help us. He's got no problem helping. We ask, we shall receive. We seek, we find, we knock, he opens the door. Glory to God. All he wants us to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for helping me. Amen? Is that too much? I, I wonder if the Lord is saying, Sean, is that too much to ask, son? And the answer is, no, Lord, it's not too much for you to ask of me. We need to do it more. Now, listen, but don't get me wrong. It's not that God needs it. God doesn't need our thanksgiving or praise. He's God. He has no needs whatsoever, but he does desire us to do it. And there's a reason for it. There's two reasons, really, why he desires for us to bring thanksgiving into the equation. One, thanksgiving brings glory and honor to whom it's rightfully due. We need to honor the Lord Jesus. And we need to give him thanks and gratitude for what he has done. He died on the cross and saved us from a devil's hell. And if he never answers another prayer, that's enough for us to thank him every day that I have a home in heaven. And my sins are forgiven and I am eternally secured and I am sealed by the Holy Spirit and I am his and he is mine and there's nothing on this planet that can change that. Is that not worth me thanking him every day of my life? Amen. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. So thanksgiving brings glory and honor to whom it's due. And then secondly, though, this is the beauty of it. Thanksgiving brings a sense of joy and peace to our hearts. Thanksgiving from the heart always edifies the person who gives it. When we issue Thanksgiving, it's, we are built up. 
When we do as God has instructed, it makes us feel good. Because we're making somebody else feel good. See how that works? The Lord knows what he's doing, y'all. He knows what he's doing. And if we'll just sacrifice that, what will happen? Number one, we're going to give it to where it's due. And secondly, it's going to edify us. Always edifies us. Let me move on. I don't want to get behind here. I wonder if the fifth man just got too busy with all the cares of life. And he just could not return and say thanks. Too many people today, and I talked about this not too long ago, about, you know, casting our cares, right? And he wants us to do that because if we get too focused upon our cares, it will keep us away from what's really important in our life. We'll start looking at all kinds of material things and materialism. And we start getting wrapped up in that. We will seldom then give thanks to God and praise to God. We seem to work harder to get more things and more stuff. But what happens is we neglect God more and more and more when we go down that road. I want God to help us today to be thankful for everything that we have. To take time and thank Him for His goodness and His generosity to us and not allow the cares of this world to beat us down where that's all that we're thinking about. For example, if you think about what are, what are and young people, you know, I always say this and I'll, and I'll tell every single one of you that when you graduate high school, I'll give me your card. I will always put $100 in there for you. That's what I do for every single senior. And then in it, I'll say, congratulations, now you have bills and responsibility. That's what you get when you graduate. Right? You get bills and responsibilities. Have fun with that. <laughs> They're like, I'm graduating. You don't really understand it, do you? Bills and responsibilities. So let's think about that. Cares of life. Would bills be a care of life that could consume us? Let me hit you with something. What is one bill we like to complain about? All of us. Because it's high. Power bill. Right? Oh! What? They're going up another hundred. I thought this was budget billing. I thought it's supposed to be kind of easy. Some of y'all are smiling because you're on budget billing like me too. That's helpful. But anyway, like, I thought, what are they doing? We haven't used this much power. But do we stop for a second and think about the, the fact that I'm getting that bill means that God has blessed me with electricity, that my life is now made easier by the conveniences of modern technology, that not only does it give me that, it gives me heating when it's cold outside. It gives me air conditioning when it's hot outside. It gives me refrigeration to take care of all of my food. And I have hot water, all that I could ever want. That's what that bill represents. That bill represents you've been blessed beyond measure. Is what that bill represents. Now this is why I like to tell, and why and we were really focused on, we had a great year last year with missions. And we're going to pick that back up, by the way. We're not letting that go to the wayside when we get things and our travels back situated. I'm sure the Lord will speak to us and we will obey. But part of the reason why it's so important is because I've been in places, particularly in Haiti, where they, did, they had absolutely none of what I just said. That I was sitting in a mission house and every person around me had no electricity. None. Had no air conditioning whatsoever. You don't need heat when you're on the equator <laughs> but it was 110 degrees at night they had no refrigeration whatsoever not one refrigerator could you find not one and there was absolutely no running water and I looked around there was thousands of people and I complained about my power bill I complained about that convenience I complain about what God has blessed. So we see what God's doing to us? Look, look beyond what's right in front of your face and look deeper into the matter. And we'll, what will we find? God's fingerprints. God's blessings upon his people. Isn't that awesome? That's amazing. So now, now you're going to be mad at me because now you can never complain about your power bill. <laughs> never again. Every time. The Lord is going to convict you every time you pick it and go, I can't believe. Oh, well, we did have air conditioning all July and August. But anyway, so anyway, blame the Lord. He's the one that gave that to me. I wrote that in in my office. I thank the Lord for the power bill uh, part of it. Let's move on. Making you mad. Or listen, I wonder if the sixth man, I got to hurry up. I really got to hurry now. I wonder, I'm going to fly through some of these real quick. I wonder if the sixth man, maybe he just didn't know why he didn't return. And the reason he didn't know why is because he was consumed with bitterness. 
I'm going to tell you this. No, y'all can get mad at me if you want to. But I believe that bitterness and resentment will rob you of your joy and your peace faster than anything can rob you of. And I think it's hard to have bitterness and thanksgiving coexisting together. Because one will overshadow the other. In other words, if you're filled with bitterness, I think it's going to be, you're going to be hard-pressed to be thankful for something. But I think if you have a heart full of thanksgiving, you're not consumed with bitterness whatsoever. You've let that go. And so this word is to somebody this morning, and I have no idea who it is. Maybe we need to let go of some bitterness. Maybe we need to let go of some resentment. What we will find is we'll be able to identify and see our blessings from God more clearly in which we can in turn give him thanks for. You with me? Amen. That was free for somebody this morning. I wonder if that seventh leper, he was just kind of weak in his awareness of all that God has done for him. Listen, have y'all have ever met somebody who only calls on God when they got a problem? Only calls on the Lord when they got a problem. And the Lord graciously takes care of a situation or a circumstance and blesses this individual. And then they go back doing what they want to do until they have another problem. I'm going to tell you that's not how we live our life. God wants us to have a relationship. He is not a genie in a bottle that we rub on it and he pops out just when we need a wish to happen. When we need something to happen at that moment, we go back and do what we're wanting to. And if we know some folks like that, we need to do... We need to make sure as Christians that we're leading them in the right direction. Say, listen, I, I, God helped you, but you need to dig a little bit deeper. And do you see his blessings upon you? He didn't have to do that. And he didn't have to wake you up this morning, but he has. And so therefore, if he did, he's got a purpose for you. What, let's find that purpose together. Then we can start. Then they can start seeing what their blessings are. But we don't need to be those folks. Moving forward, real quick. I only got two left. I wonder if that eighth leper, if he just didn't feel like it. How many times have we said that? I just don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. Now, this guy has been a long time waiting Jesus and his healing. No doubt it was a traumatic experience for him. Now, he has traveled. Because you know, Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priests before they were made whole. And it says, as they went, they were made whole. Now, I don't know how far they traveled. That we don't know. But let's just hypothetically say it was a pretty long distance. I wonder if he's like, I just don't. I was made whole, but I just, I was cured of leprosy, which there was no cure from that. There's no medicine you can give somebody back in those days for leprosy. And he's made instantly whole, but he says, ah, it's a long way back. I just don't feel like it. My feet are hurting. Back's bothering me. I just don't feel like it. One of the greatest truths that we can learn as a Christian and in the Christian walk that it's never wrong to do the right thing. And it's never a bad time to do what's right. To do, you know, because right, it's right to do right. Does that make sense? Regardless of our feelings, regardless of how tired we are, regardless of how we feel, there's never wrong to do the right thing. Are y'all with me? It's never a wrong time. If I ask you a question, you ask me, Brother Sean, I just don't know what to do. Is it the right thing to do? Yes, then do it. It's going to hurt somebody's feelings. Is it the right thing to do? Yes, then do it. Is it the right time to do it? Yes, then do it. Regardless of how we're feeling. Remember, praise and thanksgiving is a sacrifice. Lord, help us today to do it when we don't even feel like it. You know, I, let me tell you, how many can tell, don't raise your hands, but how many of you can testify, as I can testify, that there's been many times in my Christian walk and in my Christian life that I haven't felt like doing something but I did it anyway, and it changed my feelings. The outcome changed how I was feeling. Because I obeyed, and because I did it anyway, and because even though I went against my five senses and what my body was telling me, I did it anyway, and God blessed me because I was obedient. Who can testify to that this morning? Amen? Many of us in this room. Expressing gratefulness to God is one of those things that we should just simply do. We should do it whether we feel like it or we don't feel like it. We should do it when we're happy or when we're sad. We should do it when we're on the mountaintop or when we're in the valley. It doesn't matter. Remember, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I read this quote. This is really cool from Rick Warren. I like this. He said this. He said, In happy moments, praise God. In difficult moments, seek God. In quiet moments, worship God. 
in painful moments, trust God. In every moment, thank God. I wish I'd have wrote that. Boy, that's good. Amen? Amen. Let's remember that as we approach Thursday, shall we? Lastly, and we know some folks like this. I wonder if the nice one just felt a little sorry for himself, and that's, maybe that's why he didn't return. How many times? I, mean, I wonder if this person, he could have been dealing with leprosy for 22 years, but maybe that one of those other nine, was a, he, they, they've been dealing with it for only two years, and now he's like, why didn't he heal me 20 years ago? Why did he wait? I had to deal with it 22 years, and this person just got in it for two years. Now this person's made whole, and now they're just having a pity party. For no reason whatsoever, even though God has blessed them. We've got to be careful of this, church. So many times we get to feeling sorry for ourselves. And we fail to count the blessings. We fail to count the blessings. It seems as if we count the blessings on our hands, but we've got to have a calculator to count our complaints. Amen? It's quiet in here for some reason. I don't know why. Am I touching home with anybody? Because we, listen... Me, you, all of us can get into that kind of rut. We can fall into that trap. Well, here's my blessings, but oh, oh, I got, I got to add it all up over here. No. I submit to you today that we're blessed beyond measure. We're blessed so abundantly. Even our trials can be blessings in disguise, church. We need to stop and think about and realize just how blessed that we are. And then once we realize that, give God thanks for it. You with me? Yeah. Now listen, I'm closing. It's right at noon, I'm closing. So let me ask the question then. Because we're family, you said. I agree. Which one of these ten are we? Who am I? Am I one of the nine? Or am I the one that stopped and turned back and fell on my knees and gave God glory for his goodness in my life? That's the man I want to be. Oh, I fail sometimes, yeah. So do you, we all do, I get it. But that's the man I want to be. I want God to know every day how thankful I am for every blessing he has given me. Amen? Yeah. And we sit around the table this Thursday, and I'm going to look at my beautiful family. I'm blessed beyond measure. Beyond compare. I simply don't deserve it. I don't. But he's given it to me anyway. And I don't know why. Outside the one complete truth. He just loves me. He does. And I'm thankful for it. Amen? Amen. You with me? Praise the Lord. I pray that God helps us be thankful in all things. At all times. For every blessing in our life. Kurt, come on up. Trish, come on up. I'm going to close. 1201. I'm closing. Listen. I hope the Lord has spoken to you today. Now listen. If you have never received Christ in this room, or if you're listening to me online right now, and you have never received Christ in your life, I've got to tell you, you've got something to be thankful for. You do. God has spared you. And He has given you an opportunity today to receive His great salvation. In Christ Jesus. He's given you another opportunity. To hear his word. To understand who he is. And what he has done for you. And you can be saved today. You can be saved today. Through the grace and power of Jesus Christ. All you got to do is come to him. Tell him. That you're a sinner. You need saving. Tell him that you need forgiveness of your sins. And you'll receive it. You'll receive it today. And you'll be born again today. And then what you will begin to experience is what we as Christians have experienced. And that's when I feel the weight lifted off of my shoulders from my sin debt being paid in full, I begin to tell him thank you. I begin to realize what he has done in my life. And thanksgiving just has to come out of my mouth when I think about what he has paid for me. Amen? You can have that today. But the rest of us, and we've been in church a long time. It's been a little quiet in here today. I've heard some amens, and that's fine. I don't preach for amens. And I wonder if God's been speaking to his people today. 
God may be saying, I don't need your things, but I desire it. I desire my children to simply tell me things. Listen, ain't no different than me and my kids. Right? If my kids don't say thank you, they get in trouble. Just like they don't say yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, right? I'm just trying to help them. God's trying to help us. Because he knows what it does inside the heart of every believer. When we stop turning to God and telling him thank you. So this week, as we approach Thursday, which is one of my most favorite holidays, which is why I'm on this and why I love it. So I've been just preaching passionately about it. I hope you feel that I love it. Because we're blessed beyond compare. And Thursday, as we gather together, let's stop Hold hands. You can hold hands with your family. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get inside and tell you what you can do in your own house with things, you know, like apparently other people were trying to do, right? Enjoy yourself. Enjoy that meal. Because there's something about sitting around the table now. I love it. It's not just because of Jeannie's dressing. That's one reason to be thankful, but there's a lot more. Amen. And have the best Thanksgiving of your life. That when that day is over. That you can lay your head down at night and say, I've never experienced anything like that I've, in my life. I've never felt so loved by my family. I've never felt so appreciated. I pray you can say that on Thursday night. Amen? And have the best night of your life. Stand to you. As we sing, just give God glory. Give Him thanks in your life. Studying this this week, God's blessed me. Amen? Bless me. When I think about it, I was in my office praying earlier. Just thanking God. May we have that attitude this week. Yes, every day. I understand that. If you know where I'm coming from, we're leading up to Thanksgiving. Don't be stressed out over it. Be grateful that we have the freedom to gather together and give thanks to God in our houses. Amen? Amen. And have a wonderful week. Be blessed abundantly. Be, be mindful of all we got going on. Those that have lost loved ones. They're going to be mourning over the Thanksgiving holiday. Be mindful of that. Be in prayer of all that we've got going on. That God would help us and bless us and use us here at Saragossa that he sees fit. Amen. Have a wonderful, glorious day in the name of Jesus. Brother Ronnie, if you would, dismiss us. In